Hi everybody, welcome to the edition today of Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii State of Clean Energy. I will be your host today, I'm Derek Sonora, I'm substituting for Jay Fidel, and my co-host on this side of me is Les Taniyama. Aloha! And we have our special guest, thank you, Jason Forrester, for coming on the show. No, oh, thanks for having me. You know, if you've been watching this month's series, we've been talking a lot about cybersecurity, and are we prepared to move forward in time with our energy grid and all its interconnections and the vulnerability issues or the non-vulnerable vulnerable I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. You're nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous. Just a little bit. This is my first time I'm doing this. I got a request to do this from somebody who's sick late yesterday. So bear with me, everybody. Hope you and feel better, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we want to talk about more about cybersecurity and where sure. the state of Hawaii wants to go with, with our renewable plans, doing this all by 2045. You know, we can get all the energy ready, mm -hmm. but are we cyber secure ready is our topic. And Jason, I, I, you know, I want to thank you for being here. I'm looking at your long list of credentials. It's quite amazing. <laughs> right now, I noticed that you're here at Island Controls. That's correct. Uh, and tell us a little bit about Island Controls and what you do there and your role. Okay, sure. Island Controls uh, is an organization which does building automation primarily um, as well as AC service and supply. Uh, but on the automation side, what we do is we take... Um, the systems in a building, the air conditioning, the lighting, whatever it is in the building that traditionally would be controlled by a switch or would be controlled through um, a time clock. And we put these on automated systems which can be scheduled, which can um, address failures on their own, which can control devices to their peak efficiency and save a lot of energy in your building and you know for example even just turning the lights off automatically is, is an obvious one but mm -hmm. we but our system can adjust for the outside lights based on the time of year so we don't have to go reset the time clock or worse yet leave the lights on when the sun's up so the we can just you know like 30 minutes before the sun goes down we'll turn the lights on and it'll change throughout the year. So that's a simple example of the, the automation and how it can you know, be used to It help doesn't sound patients. simple at all. If you think about everything you just said, uh -huh. that is a very complex system that a lot of people who work and live in a building mm -hmm. are really dependent on it. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I could be so bold, you're one of those unsung heroes that are out there that's doing a lot of good for the state of Hawaii and making a facility and a lot of people who watch this show know that facilities everywhere throughout the state uses the most resources today as a one shop area. So what Jason and I had just understood you saying is mm -hmm. that you manage all of the expectations of how the building uses these natural resources, if I heard you right? Yeah, that's correct. So you have to use some resources to cool a building. Yes. You have to use some resources to light a building. Yes. Our goal, obviously, is to use as few resources as possible and still provide the same level of service. So we don't want to overcool a space. We don't want to provide lights when they're not needed. We don't want to, to run when a space is unoccupied. And so by using the controls, you can run only at the amount you need to run. You can supply only the, use only the resources that are necessary. And in addition, sometimes just tracking your resources can tell you a lot. Um, I put in water meters for a large local customer, and it turned out they were using hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, wow. which, which they knew about. What they didn't know is, is that one of the systems was broken and was using millions of gallons of water. Wow, nice. And so the addition of like a low-cost meter informed the, the, my customer that they were using a ton of water they didn't mean to be using. You know, so sometimes it can be relatively simple, just providing some data, mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be quite complicated. Um, Les is an energy engineer that designs systems to use every bit of their capability. And so, as you know, initially this system would turn on and then turn off. And then it would turn on, but only run, let's say, as much as we need to. So we basically put a knob on it to run it like 50% when you only need it that much. And then Les came along and said, but if you ran it at 20% and then 60% and then you did that on only when it's the right temperature, we could save even more energy. And so I translate Les's ideas and engineering into a set of controls that then run the building. So given 
the huge complexity and the task. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you have a lot of clients throughout the state of Hawaii. Yeah. yeah? Uh, if a malicious person wanted to come and attack these systems, mm -hmm. how prepared are the systems that you touch mm -hmm. to prevent this kind of malicious activity? Well, okay, so our, the thing to understand about the automation software mm -hmm. is that it is primarily based around the traditional web server. Um, you're, you're, as an end user, you're going to be accessing this the way you access Google, the way you access Yahoo. Whenever you log in, you log in with a username and password. So these are traditional systems for the most part. So are, when you yeah. say user, who is that person? Well, it really varies lately. Um, hmm. Traditionally, when we would install it, we'd have one user, and that would be the person in charge of making the air conditioning work in the building. This is usually going to be a facilities manager or a person you know, with a, a mechanical background. But uh, lately, in the last you know, decade or so, the energy, uh, the energy consortiums are coming and saying, look, how can we save energy? Well, and then there are also people who are saying, well, we want this to fulfill some other requirements too. We're not just going to be on or off. You know, we're not just going to control for energy. Maybe we're going to also put this into a um, some sort of a display. We're going to promote this. We're going to we're going to have a partnership with the energy company. We're going to have a partnership with this I other see. vendor. And so now your customers for this data have broadened dramatically, and the number of people who need access to the data come from a number of different walks of life it might be um, they might be billing their customers if it's a large organization like a building or a mall or something they might have they might take the data we provide and then cut that up and and pass that on to their customers so there might be accounting customers there might be management customers there might be the guy who's using it to control and do the work itself the facilities folks but these are all these are all users of the system and they all have a different view into that data and a different use for it. So let's take this in different levels or tiers. Mm -hmm. Let's say one building is one level. Okay. Okay. How important is it for the building management, the building own owners mm -hmm. to take cybersecurity of concern or issue and how does that how do you feel or what damage can be done if they don't? Give us the level of the degree of impact. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, money is tight, mm -hmm. security is way down there in the owners and the property management line, but they're not paying attention to it. And should they be, shouldn't there be? What could happen, worst case scenario, with just one building keeping in mind? And Les, you, you're in this world as well. If, you know, you have thoughts and um, comments about this, please kick on in on this one. <laughs> Okay, so the automation systems shouldn't be thought of as really different from other systems. Your, your corporate IT systems have many of the same hardware, software, interaction, security demands. They're, all of these systems should be treated relatively equivalently, but we find that in facilities in particular, they're, they're very late to the game joining, not only in using the information technology, but in joining the um, corporate IT system that already exists. Most of these organizations have built themselves um, like an email infrastructure, a web fixed and, and web facing infrastructure. They supply resources to their to their workers and so forth okay. through the network. Yes. But these systems are often kept completely separate or, or, or perhaps not even IT isn't even aware they exist. And that really should change. Um, the, the possibilities are very bad if, if any system, whether it's the automation system or their email system, if any of these systems are not cared for, patched, sure. backed up, secured, these systems all are vulnerable because just through the nature of being a system and being connected to the internet. I see. Now, you get a lot of benefits from being on the internet. Email without the internet, not particularly useful. But an automation system can be quite useful without connecting it to the internet. So mm -hmm. there, is, there is a start right there. There is a, one way to look at it is if you don't make it available remotely, you have far fewer vulnerabilities. But, you know, there's a lot to be said for getting a call and being able to fix it while you're traveling, being able to stop the problem without having to drive to the office you know if you're if you have a remote site i have customers on uh, different islands mm -hmm. if they had to wait for me to fly to their facility to fix a problem 
that would you know could be days, but I can often fix their problem in a matter of minutes, logging in remotely. So the, the power of it, it makes it worthwhile. But you want to treat it like you would treat any um, public facing service. Yes, you know. And, and that's what's really not happening, I think, a lot of the times in facilities. Well, what you just described, if you don't mind me just kind of reiterating, sure. is the facilities persons today mm -hmm. has to be an incredible person because this person is taking care of build-outs mm -hmm. for putting up walls. Mm -hmm. This person is taking care of the plumbing. Mm -hmm. He's taking care of personnel down there. They're doing lanterns outside with the landscaping. Absolutely. They're doing all of these things. And now what I'm hearing from you mm -hmm. is this person has to have a level of sophistication in the IT realm as well. Um, this person must make a tremendous amount of money, more than yes. the president or the CEO. And be very handsome oh my and goodness. drive a very nice car. And yeah. So, you know, that's what I wonder, because you're, you're all around the state. How many of these individuals, these properties <coughs> are equipped in their facilities to take on this kind of responsibility? Right. Almost, well, almost none of them. Well, I think that's where one of the major disconnects is, you know, with uh, people like Jason having to put in um, a fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollar system that fully automates certain systems and gathering a lot of data. But you know, it's the user, the operators that may not be up to the level of that technology in regards to understand how to keep it online, hmm. uh, because. Um, how do you determine what is bad data? You know, you want that data, but how do you determine if it's good or bad? Can that reflect you on your business uh, decisions? And the answer is obviously yes. Yeah. So we come down to the people. You know, um, part of why we're here is to understand we need training, I think, as one of the forefront issues regarding cybersecurity. Because I think everybody in the building need, from the secretary to the janitor, needs to be uh, have some knowledge about cybersecurity. Because everybody that picks up that computer in the building is susceptible to causing an issue, and uh, it can happen and has happened. Uh, look at the news, right? Mm -hmm. So, because our show topic for the whole month has been linked to our grid and mm -hmm. making that grid a smarter grid. Now, I'm going to think very um, negatively. Okay. I'm going to pretend I'm going to take a, uh, some words from uh, Washington, D.C. Bad, bad people out there. <laughs> what could bad, bad people out there do if they were able to break in, mm -hmm. take control of many of our large facilities, which use a lot of energy? Could they actually disrupt our whole grid? I'm just thinking like a bad, bad person. You know, that, that's always going to be the case with any, with any system that is integrated closely into technology. The vulnerabilities in the technology are, are going to cause issues. In air conditioning, especially here in Hawaii, we don't have freezing. We're, no, one's, no one's probably going to freeze to death if I don't get the heaters <laughs> on. And no one's probably going to boil if I don't get the AC on. So there's a tendency in facilities we tend to think well it's probably going to be all right and no one's really going to do any significant damage even sure. if they got in but the the truth of the matter is is that a lot of the hacking that goes on is not targeted hacking it's more of like a shotgun approach they you know there's a lot of scan every ip on the internet see what's vulnerable attack that take it over now use that computer to scan every computer on the internet and see what's vulnerable, attack that and take I it see. over. I see, okay, okay. So, so non-targeted non vulnerabilities are just as big of an issue. There's ransomware where they'll encrypt your files. There's, you know, just any sort of traditional hacking, spamming, any of these types of things are vulnerable on your facility's computer just like they are on all of your other computers. There's nothing special about that facility's okay. computer. Okay. Um, the, <clears throat> the vulnerabilities to the system for people being in it are going to depend on what you're controlling and to what level. Okay. Are, could I, for example, damage a piece of equipment? I could turn it off and on several times a second until I guarantee it won't turn off and on anymore. Right, so I can I could probably do that. Right, mm -hmm. is that going to cause you know the twenty four scenario where the terrorists? No, it's not going to. So but is it? But is it going to be damaging? Yes, it will be. Will I lose 
could I lose control if somebody takes over my computer? Yes, I might not be able to turn on and off my lights or my AC until I, I deal with that infection, right? So, but that's for your standard customers. Now, if you talk about the grid level, you're talking about a larger organization, and on the mainland, you're talking about multiple organizations. Here, we really only have the main electric mm -hmm, company. Mm -hmm. um, we do have some... There are sponsors, uh, too, by the way, so okay. be gentle. I, I have no problem being okay. gentle. It's a tough job, especially with the amount of renewables on the grid right now. Yes which is why they need to do the management that they're doing and they need to do that adjustment. And then to do that, you need the controls. Yes. You know, um, could, could the lights be taken over and shut down? Yes, they could. Any computer is a vulnerable computer. So you have to take steps to minimize your vulnerability. And you know, for a business, some of those steps are relatively straightforward. Don't give everybody access. Don't, and don't give anyone access that doesn't need it. Don't make it accessible if you don't have to um, from, you know, from just anywhere on the internet, I right? Think, so yeah. I like to advocate putting a VPN in front. Um, they're very affordable now. A VPN is a? Uh, it's called a virtual private network. Okay. And essentially what you're doing is, um, you're familiar with the little router that you get at home when you plug yes. the cable modem in. And that's how you get from your computer out to the internet, right? Okay, oh, we're going to start to put this down. Okay. As we kind of take a break here, we want to do a little kind of exercise that they always do. All right. So um, I'm going to just kind of let this one go. Do I do this? I'm Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon. ThinkTechHawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii and look forward to seeing you at Education Matters on Tuesdays with me, Carol Mon Lee. Hey, has your signal just been taken over or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. <laughs>
um, taking over, collecting the data, collecting I information, see, see. using it as a stepping stone to other systems. And that's where uh, I think the facilities, you need to pay attention in facilities because when you install these systems, they are, depending on how they're set up, they could be connected to your primary systems. And now there's more and more demand for the primary systems like accounting to get the data from your automation systems. So they might even be somewhat integrated. And, you, I see. and that user who has the, uh, the login might use the same login and password on the automation that they do on the accounting system. So you can you see where those sorts yeah, of vulnerabilities yeah. to me are a larger risk than somebody got in and flipped something on and off sure. and caused, caused damage and so forth. It seems like that would be a more rational motivation, okay. you know. And we saw that, you know, the most famous one would be Target. Um, Target had a very highly publicized vulnerability because their automation system was on the same network as their point of sale. Now, had they segmented their networks, um, there wouldn't have been a vulnerability when the, um, the automation system was hacked. It wouldn't have been a vulnerability to the point of sale system. I see. So I like to, to promote segmentation, preferably physical segmentation, separate networks entirely. If you can't, then a virtual segmentation of the networks where the networks don't communicate, even though they might share the same hardware. And we'll see that in a large organization which already has networks in all of their buildings. That they'll provide a network that is only used for the automation. Um, even though it's all on the same device, that I can't talk to the other devices. You know, that there. sounds um, a little beyond the facility guys. Um, you know, which you're scope. right. You're absolutely right, and that's yeah. where I again and again I would encourage the customers to work this through the, with their IT folks. No right. longer to treat your automation system as being part of facilities. You know, a lot of the times the customer will come to me and say, "Can I buy a computer with this system?" And I'm like, "You could, but would you normally go to your air conditioning company and ask them to sell you computers?" Yes. And I would suggest that you work with your IT organization. Now you're going to have a supported computer that matches your, your corporate standards. It's going to have your patches. It's going to have your property tag. It's going to be on the inventory. Most importantly, it's going to get backed up with the other important that's IT systems. That's very important. You know, if you don't have a current backup that's been tested, you probably don't have backups. Yes. And at some point, you know, hackers aside, you're going to have a hardware failure. You're going to have, you know, you're in the facilities down there. If you have this computer under a desk and it's in the chiller plant mm -hmm. and the water pipe breaks because there's lots of water pipes. Now Absolutely. your computer is floating away. Absolutely. All your data is floating away. You don't have any backups. These would all be taken care of as part of the procedure if it was just part and of IT the, in yeah, the IT. first place. I want to give Les a chance over here to yeah, say something. Well, one of the big issues that we always talk about is the disconnects and... Uh, uniquely, the decisions that are made at the facility level as to how the system operates, many times, in fact, most often than not, it's done by mechanical engineers that design the system. Mm -hmm. And they're dictating what they want the system to do. Mm -hmm. And they're giving you the, the rules of which to follow, of which you're trying to program for. Mm -hmm. Now. That's one of the things. I, it rarely do I see in today's specifications coming out of the engineers is IT concerns or cyber concerns mm -hmm. and what to do. And so, you know, that's one of the areas. The other thing I like to touch on is when he talked about Target, <laughs> that's a very, very famous one because it was a building automation system that yeah. was the root cause of the issue. But here's another issue. If, if I was the building engineer, and I use the laptop for my work. Mm -hmm. And I also go into the building automation and also communicate with administration with that same computer. Is that a problem? Because isn't communicating with all these different sectors within the building as well as surfing the net going to be an issue to the security of the building, especially the assets? And I'm talking about the financial assets. Yeah. 
Well, and we obviously we don't recommend personal use computers and work use computers. And you know, you see that more and more in the office now as a computer is a more affordable thing. It's no longer like this is the only computer I'll ever have access to. People have a device at home, they've got phones and pads, yeah. they've got network at home and so forth. So the part of the problem used to be, well, you know, I've only got one computer, I've got to do my banking, and I've got to order something from eBay, and I do my word processing all on this one device. But now we like to encourage everyone to segment their usage. To, um, to do purely work on work devices. And this isn't just for automation either. This is, this is all around, you know, we have, everyone has seen the problem, you know, you're using it for Facebook. You go on Facebook, there's an infected game, an infected ad or something, now your computer is infected. Now it's looking for other computers on the network to infect, but you're at work now, you've taken that into work, and now that's another virus propagating okay. vector. Right. Here's another big picture thing. We Since we're talking about energy a efficiency. A minute or so. Sure. Okay. We have data. Mm -hmm. We're attaching meters to the building mm -hmm. to understand how much we're using, when we're using it. Mm -hmm. Can those numbers be changed and mimicked through spoofing of sorts and to misinterpret? To you know, the that's, that's, pretty, that's, um, that's pretty deep, but uh, it, obviously those numbers could be changed. Could they be changed in a malicious, useful way, like reducing your bill? Could I, could I log in and change my bill by a decimal place? You know, those systems have a lot of security on them, and, have, and they've been worked on for many years for that reason, to make sure that they get every penny, right? Yeah, yeah. But we need to treat our systems as though they are as critical as that, and we need to do that with some, you know, some basic hygiene, making sure your usernames and passwords are different. Okay, we've got so a we're little winding bit time now. Left. We yeah. have a little bit of time so left. Is there something mm -hmm. that you want to come across and say, hey, facility guys, do this one thing <laughs> to help you guys right away? Uh, definitely get your IT folks in there and plan this going forward. Don't wait for it afterwards. Don't let somebody come to you and say, okay, look, we're all done. Now we're going to put this system in on top of it. And then after we're all done with that, we're going to come talk to you a little bit about security at the end. Make it from the start. Design it in from the start. Jason, you've been a great guest. This is a great topic. Well, we could talk all day about we this. We probably could. And I want to thank my co-host, Les Taniyama. It's it Les. sounds like we need more discussions in the future about the facilities. You know, Les has been harping on this for a year now about facilities and the criticalness. So we need more discussions about this. Ashray on Friday. Ashray on Friday. Ashray is doing um, lesson seminars, some talks about energy, energy efficiency, and things related to everything automation. Mm -hmm. That's